Hey, what's up guys? I'm KBHD here, and this is the Pocophone F2 Pro, the successor, one of the successors to the super, super hyped Pocophone from 2018. So this phone, like the first one, uh, will not be on sale in the US, but in markets like India and the Philippines, this phone is fire for about 500 bucks when you translate it. So. It's not quite the same thing as the original, which was like the maximum value for $300, but hey, I'm okay with that. And they also have the regular Pocophone F2 if you want that. But this phone is really interesting. From the inside out, this phone checks a lot of the boxes you'd expect to find in a high-end phone. And I guess basically they're adding the word pro here and that just kind of means better. So from the overall build quality to all the specs and all the numbers on paper and all the included features, it looking pretty complete. Not only is it a pretty big phone, but you pick it up and you immediately notice it's, it's built well, it's solid to the point where it's actually a little heavier than I expected, and it's made of metal and glass, so it doesn't creak or flex at all. And then you get plenty of extras. The little accent color for the power button is sweet. And when's the last time you saw a phone with both a headphone jack and an IR blaster? That is a rare combo for 2020. Uh, the top of the phone also has that pop-up camera with an LED notification light, and you get this sweet emerald color, which, you know, I, I know pretty much every high-end phone now is a glass sandwich, so it's kind of getting predictable, but at least it still feels good in the hand. And then, of course, the piece de resistance, is that how you say it? Uh, is this, this huge full-screen, corner-to-corner, uninterrupted display. In case you haven't noticed, there are a lot of hole-punch cameras out there now, and so this doesn't have a hole-punch doesn't have a notch, and it's doing my favorite method of getting rid of the hole punch camera and the selfie camera. It's the little pop-up. So now you have a full screen, corner to corner display, 6.67 inches of 1080p AMOLED, and it's a flat display too. No fancy curved glass, which I am totally fine with. It's HDR10 plus certified, and it gets up to a comfortable, but not incredible, 500 nits. I'm just happy we have displays like this on a phone of this price though. It is 60 hertz, and I think if I was spending any more, I would definitely be looking for a high refresh rate. But aside from that, it's clear that the standout feature of this already great hardware package is the screen. The fingerprint reader underneath is pretty good too. At this point, it's also kind of cool that this is pretty much standard. You know, this used to be a high-end only feature, but now it's started to trickle down and it seems like the optical fingerprint reader under the glass is cheap enough that almost any phone can include it. And then the pop-up camera here has just a little extra, little, little extra flair to it. It's got the LEDs on the module itself. And actually, if you go into the special features section in the settings, you can configure the front camera effects and really customize the, the sound effects and the light color for every time you open that front-facing camera. Oh. It also gives you a warning if you're doing it too many times. Anyway, on top of all that, it comes with this clear case, which I'm learning people really like, especially for getting rid of that little camera bump on the back. But if you're not into that, which I'm usually not, then you can always grab a skin from our channel sponsor, Dbrand, to mix it up with the color or the back texture finish. You know, this matte black skin has never done me wrong, so I'll link it below. But honestly, I think holding this phone, you know, knowing, I know it's 500 bucks, but if I didn't know it was 500 bucks, the only thing that would tip me off that this isn't a $900 phone is there's a little bit of rainbow banding on the display from off axis. And then also these rounded corners. I just noticed the lower end phones, for whatever reason, just usually have more of swooping, bigger corner radius, while the higher end phones can tighten that up, make it sharper, more boxy. Other trade-offs you can't tell just from holding it. Uh, there is no wireless charging, despite the glass back. And there's also no IP, official IP water and dust resistance rating. Those things cost money. Oh, and I just, the vibration motor, as it buzzes in my hand, I'm reminded about it. Now, you can't necessarily tell that it is a cheap phone because of a bad vibration motor, because there are expensive phones with bad vibration motors too. Um, but it's just, it's never something you unnotice. Unless you turn haptics off, you'll constantly be reminded about a bad rattly vibration motor. Petition for everyone to just work on those. Just, just make those better. There's a single mono speaker at the bottom of this phone, which is bad news on the spec sheet, but honestly, it gets surprisingly loud and crisp and doesn't even really distort that much at all at high volumes. I was listening to a YouTube podcast, maximum volume from across the room, 
and it was doing great. This might be the best single mono speaker I've ever heard in a phone. Now it is, you can still block the whole thing with one finger. That's the downside of a single mono speaker. Um, but they made it work here. I've been using this phone for a couple days and it's got a lot of similarities from the OnePlus 8 Pro I was just coming from, including same chip, Snapdragon 865, which means it's also 5G enabled. It's about the same size as that phone. And the battery life here was actually better. It's got a hefty 4,700 milliamp hour cell and it's only powering a 1080p 60 hertz display. So you'd expect great battery and it delivers great battery. And for bonus points, it comes with this hefty boy in the box. This is a 30 watt fast charger. It comes with a $500 phone. Um, now, as you can tell, this is not a US plug. So I've been charging it at regular speeds with the charger I already have, um, but good battery life plus fast charging in the box means I'm fine with no wireless charging. Okay, so this phone has quad cameras on the back. And cameras here are where it becomes a little more obvious, especially to me, if you're pretending to be a high-end flagship versus actually being a high-end flagship phone. Now, when you hear 64 megapixel quad camera array capable of 8K video, I mean, that's a pretty good set of numbers on paper. Now that I've used it, I'll say, this camera system is capable, but it's not quite the crazy high end you might expect just from the numbers. The main camera, it's solid. It is a 64 megapixel sensor, but it's gonna spit out 16 megapixel images by default. And you can see they look fine. You know, I'm not complaining. They aren't amazing photos. They're not particularly sharp or great with colors or dynamic range or anything like that, but nothing's terrible about them either until you get to low light, so that's fine. You wouldn't be buying this phone. You shouldn't be buying this phone for impressive image quality at a low price. You know, that would be, you'd be looking along the lines of Pixel 3a or iPhone SE. But unlike those phones, this one also has an ultra wide camera, which is, you know, cool to have. It's a lot softer and not nearly as good of a camera as the main one, but at least it's fun. It serves its purpose for larger subjects and that wider field of view. And then there's two more cameras. There is a five megapixel macro camera and a two megapixel depth camera. Now you might've been ready to write those off. You might've thought I was gonna write those off, but I used them expecting to write them off and I was actually fairly impressed. The depth camera seems to be doing at least something for portrait mode shots. I don't use portrait mode much, but the cutouts here look good, maybe a little artificial if anything. And the five megapixel macro camera is actually decent. Now I've been shooting down all those two megapixel macro cameras pretty hard this year because they're just bad, they look bad but somewhere I guess between those two megapixel macros and this five megapixel, the shots got a little more usable and now macro shooting is actually fun. You can get some interesting results. Colors are a little muted, but overall, I'm not mad at them for including this one. And then the selfie camera is again, fine. It's about on par with the main camera. It's funny, they don't, they don't watermark the selfies by default, but they do watermark everything else. But yeah, look at the details. Look at the fibers, the soft cotton, shop.mkbhd.com, it's beautiful. Even the 8K video is usable on this phone. Now it's kind of funny, it actually lags pretty hard when recording and playing back that 8K video on the phone, which I thought was a pretty bad sign, but then I imported it and looked at it on the computer and it looks fine. So overall, this is a, a capable camera system. It's fun, it's not gonna give you the best quality images and you should look elsewhere if you want that, but as far as a decent quad camera setup for 500 bucks, this phone nailed that. Really the software is probably the only reason I couldn't rock this phone every day. My UI, like I said, isn't my thing. And even performance to me, because of my UI, didn't feel high end. Like Snapdragon 865 should feel smooth with a 1080p display, pretty much always. But it doesn't always here. Part of that is the software. Part of that is also probably that I'm spoiled at this point, getting used to all these higher refresh rate displays but I just generally felt like it should be stuttering less and should be smoother. And there was of course some cool features like theme selectors and the always on display with the customizable clock and things like that. But there's also occasionally ads inside the UI and the stock apps. But if I'm just evaluating this whole phone as a package for 500 bucks, it's a deal. They did a really good job here. Uh, it's, it's the real deal. You know, they have the, the non-pro Poco F2, they have the Poco X2, and then there's just a whole ton of other competition in this space 
if you like different things about different budget phones. And I talked about that in the Poco X2 video. So this phone is a good sign of a lot of action in that space. We might think and see that a lot of the improvement at the very high end now is pretty incremental, lots of minor updates this year, but there's a lot of action down here. So this is exciting, good to see. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.